officials are telling residents right now to stay home as those waters overrun riverbanks, cars, roads, and homes. News 13's Kimberly King is live in the River Arts District where rain has been falling for several hours. Kim, what have you learned? Ty, what we've been observing basically is the past 90 minutes and really seeing the effects of those bands of rain that have been coming across the area, the remnants of Fred, as Jason has been showing on the radar. And we've been experiencing it because you can see right now it's at six o'clock, a little bit after, and we almost see a little bit of light coming through the overcast conditions. 10 minutes ago, if you saw us, it was pounding rain. Now we've been here at the Craven Street boat dock since about 4.30. And while we still see the dock, a large portion of it, the front end of it, where people walk down to the river is basically submerged completely, but we really haven't seen the water level moving up all that much on the dock, which is good news, I guess. But you can see back behind it how quickly the French Broad River is flowing. We also have some new video to show you tonight that was sent in by people who are out across the mountains seeing what's going on with the emergency level of this severe weather across the region. The footage that we are going to show you here is from Candler. Drivers stranded in rising floodwaters on the 1100 block of Smoky Park Highway. The man who shot this tells us that passengers were standing on their cars as responders came to get them with rafts. And then a driver on Old Asheville Highway sent us water levels, showed us water levels on the road. Cautionary tales of real dangers crossing flooded roadways. A box truck earlier today turned over on I-40 at the Brevard Road exit. Emergency responders are overwhelmed with calls of emergencies as a result of the heavy rain and flooding going on, as well as power outages in the area. We saw a power outage on Smoky Park Highway at a gas station where they were trying to use flashlights and the pumps cut off. Actually, pretty much sit and wait. <laughs> you know, we're losing business. Um, nobody can get gas. Well, Hydro plane a couple times, but take it slow. We're good. Not a good day to be driving. No, not a good day at all. Now, this morning, fire trucks closed Smoky, uh, excuse me, they closed a Sweeten Creek Road 25 as a tree fell across the highway at 8 a.m., closing off the north and southbound lanes for several hours. Near the River Arts District, we see that Carrier Park and the parking lots are completely submerged in water. So, of course, we are all watching and observing these sheets of rain, but at least right now we have a break in the Asheville area. And we have a breaking situation right now in Candler. Water is across the roadway on Smoky Park Highway. Rescue crews are looking for someone who got out of their car. News 13's Hannah McKenzie is there. You see those live pictures coming in right now with the latest. Hannah, what can you tell us? As you can see, those crews packing that boat up right now. We have some amazing news to tell you guys. The man who they were looking for just walked up behind us right here. His name is Jose. He actually said he didn't realize how deep this water was when he drove into it. And before he could know what was happening, he threw it in reverse. It was too late. Take a look out there behind us. You can see one car there, the tail end of one car. That is not the car that Jose drove in. I'm told there are five vehicles behind me here on Smoky Park Highway, which is very hard to believe. When we first arrived here, we could at least see four of them. So this water is rising very, very rapidly. Now we have a lot to tell you about in this area right now with the remnants of Tropical Storm Fred really taking a toll here. Haywood County being hit especially hard. We tried to head close to Haywood County and this is as far as we could get. Smoky Park Highway clearly closed. Um, also another area of Smoky Park Highway closed following the collapse of a retaining wall near Church Street in Canton and two lanes of I-40 westbound are closed as crews work to clean up a debris flow. Right now Haywood County at, is declared as a state of emergency. The Haywood County Commission Chairman Kevin Ensley making that declaration just about an hour ago. He activated temporary shelters in that um, declaration and also also gave emergency management staff the authority to shut down roads and areas that are 
deemed dangerous. And speaking of those road closures, obviously there are many right now. Down trees and power lines posing a real threat across much of our viewing area right now. So much so that um, David Uchiyama with the North Carolina Department of Transportation warning folks, if you do not have to be out on the roadways right now, don't tempt fate, stay at home. He tells me this is a warning they usually keep back for ice and snowstorms, but if you take a look behind me, you can tell today clearly an exception. And fortunately, as I explained, the rescue that was happening when we first arrived here ended on a very happy note. Jose was okay. He said he had to swim out of his car, kind of got swept up in some currents, but he is safe. So I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. News 13's Megan Danahay and Stephanie Santostasi are standing by right now with updates. Megan, you're in Canton. What are you seeing? Hey, Jay, we are standing next to the Pigeon River, which thankfully has gone down from those record setting levels yesterday afternoon. We are across the river from Sorrells Park and uh, it's it's calming down for sure. I want to show you what we found over here. We found another one of those giant bags of mulch from the uh, the Farm and Garden Center, which is at least two football fields upstream from where we're standing now. Whole bunch of heavy stuff on the side of the, the banks of the river. And this is a uh, Bearwater's Brewing Company, and it's just a mess. We've got kegs laying around covered in mud. I, this is some kind of a, um, uh, a helium tank, a propane tank, something like that, pallets, uh, all kinds of stuff. The, the river is back down to 4.7 feet as of right now. Flood stage is 8.5 feet, so we're almost four feet below flood stage. But yesterday at 6.30 in the evening, we reached a record setting level of 16.15 feet, which is about three feet above the historical crest here at uh, the Pigeon River. We are in Canton. Uh, the other things that you could expect to find in Canton is a whole lot of mud. There is literally mud and muck covering the streets all the way up into town. So Main Street into town, park coming out of town, completely covered in mud, and then going out of town the other way up to where park and Main can join. Then they're gonna see a lot of mud out there as well. Uh, the, the sun is coming up here. People are starting to come out. So we're gonna see, uh, continue to look around at the damage and see what else we can find. We'll bring you the latest in just a little bit.